Hello everyone and welcome to Half Hour with Jesus and it's really good to share with you today and I hope that everyone is well and that you're keeping safe and coming to terms with all the new rules that uh, we're having to live with but um, just pray that God will bless you uh, as we share together uh, today. Linda's now going to open with a prayer. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew, that we may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on us, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee we will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on us, breath of God, till we are wholly thine, until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on us, breath of God, so shall we never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday was a special day for us in the Christian calendar. Uh, you're probably aware that it's what we call Pentecost Sunday, or sometimes we refer to it as Whit Sunday. Uh, and actually, we're meeting today on what we know locally as Whit Friday. And we are now in what is known also as the Feast of Pentecost. But that is a very important point time for us. As Christians and it's often referred to as the birthday of the church because it's the time when we remember following the death of Jesus the disciples have been meeting behind locked doors and then as he promised on the day of Pentecost the Holy Spirit came upon them and it transformed them from being frightened and being scared to being men who were bold and courageous and they grew a whole new love for jesus one bible commentator puts it like this on ascension day christ went back to heaven and on pentecost the holy spirit came down and the church went out and i just love that because as we've been finding in these days, the church is more than just a building. It's about people who are mobilized by the Holy Spirit and about sharing the love of Jesus. I give thanks to God that I was brought up in a Christian home. But I was also brought up to understand and know God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Scripture. And it was only much later in my Christian life when I was introduced to the person of the Holy Spirit. And as some have suggested, it was like that move from, as, which some of us will recall, from black and white TV to colour TV. It brought a whole new perspective. Or alternatively, it was like finding that missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle that we'd lost. And that picture made sense. The Holy Spirit for me was the missing piece of the jigsaw. And through knowing and experiencing the Holy Spirit, we, I've known his power to grow and deepen, and above all, my love for Jesus. I want to briefly today just look at one verse in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation of the Bible it says this don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. 
I want to think about three things that there are, are there in this Bible verse. Firstly, it says that we're not to copy the behavior and customs of our world. Many translations refer to conforming to the standards of the world. When we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then really Jesus is the key decider for our life. He is the main priority in our lives. But, you know, at times also we get distracted both in our churches and in our individual Christian lives about our priorities. And certainly we're having to deal with issues like that at the moment in our church and also in individual Christian lives. And when I thought of that, it, I thought it would probably be helpful to earth that, to think of some actual examples of things that maybe get in the way of our following Jesus. Maybe the television that actually governs what we do and what we, what, what we watch. Our um, smartphones, how we use them. The way that we gossip or tell half-truths. And as Linda sat at the side of me, she would want me to mention about driving. Because so often on a Sunday we've been to church and are driving back along the bypass when someone cuts me up. And she has to remind me, probably sometimes on several occasions, that I have a fish on the back of the car. And it's not a very good um, way to behave, to shout at others. When we talk about conforming, it is about doing what we want and not what God wants. And maybe our prayer should be, um, your will, not mine, Lord. Your will, not mine. But the second thing that I want to draw out of this passage is about being transformed. So from being conformed, we transform by the power of the Holy Spirit and many translations talk about the renewing of our minds by the Holy Spirit. In this translation, the New Living Translation, it talks about being transformed into a new person by the way that we think. I've met many people in my life who say to me that they would love to change something in their life and they've and very commendably, they've tried all sorts of ways to transform their lives. But it is only God through his Holy Spirit that really can bring those changes that need to take place. Jesus, in that passage in John chapter 15, talks about the vine and the branches. It's a lovely passage. If you've not read it recently, do read it again. And what challenges me as a, someone who enjoys gardening is that Jesus says that it's not only those branches that are dead or, or producing poor fruit that need to be pruned, but it's also those branches that produce fruit that need to be pruned so they produce even better fruit. And there is something here about allowing God's Holy Spirit to cut back those things in our lives that need to be cut back so that we are transformed more and more into the very likeness, likeness of Jesus. In Galatians chapter 5 and verses 22, it talks about what we know as the, and we describe as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And this is what Paul says there. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And that is what we call the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And that is not grown by our efforts. Not by our, what we do, it is by submitting ourselves 
more and more to God's Holy Spirit. Not my will, but your will be done. And then finally in this passage, it's not only talking about conforming and transforming, but I want to suggest it, it also talks about performing. And what this says, um, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Knowing God's will, because it's not only about receiving the Holy Spirit so we feel good, and we feel blessed and we feel that we're um, demonstrating the fruit but doing but it's about allowing that holy spirit to nudge us and to direct us so that we become witnesses because jesus said when the holy spirit comes upon you you will be witnesses both where we live and to the furthest corners of the earth In in Acts 1, verse 8, this is what it says. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. Are we willing to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, to use us, so that we become witnesses to share the love of Jesus. That we seize every opportunity. And as we approach situations, we ask that important question, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Let me conclude by sharing a very a story that some of you will have heard me share before, but it is relevant to what we've been thinking about today. And it's about my daughter who had, uh, was probably the old eldest of the uh, children on our cul-de-sac where we live to still have stabilizers on her bike. She was about nine when my father-in-law visited one day without any discussion or negotiation took it upon himself to just remove the stabilizers. And my daughter then had to learn to cycle without stabilizers. But she very quickly realized that she enjoyed a whole new freedom that she'd never known before. And why I share that, because I just wonder sometimes by conforming to things in our world, we're failing to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us and to use us in the way that God really wants. Paul also says to, in, in his letter to the church at Galatia, in chapter 5, verse 1, if the Son of God sets you free, then you are free indeed. You are free, uh, free. And we know that new and that whole new freedom that only we can find through God's Holy Spirit. And I pray that as we think and share and uh, pray over the coming days, we may be more open to His Spirit and allow that to to really challenge us about the priorities we have in our lives. We're going to sing a song shortly, but before we do that, we're going to listen to Linda read a Bible passage that is very familiar probably to all of us, even if, it, if from attending a wedding. But it's a, it's a prayer that I want us to share. One of the people who had a, an had a big impact on my life and made a big influence was a guy called David Watson who was an evangelist and a, a fantastic preacher but I can remember on many occasions he talked about using the passage that Linda's going to read as a personal prayer 
And every time in the passage where it uses the word I, that you replace it with your name. We're not going to do that today, but we're just going to use the word that maybe over the next few days, there may be an opportunity for you to just sit quietly and read that passage and put your name into that passage every time it uses the word I. And it's about allowing the Holy Spirit to transform our lives. So the prayer is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I'm going to ask Linda to, Linda to lead us in prayer now. Let's pray. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. But love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete. And even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I now know is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. Thanks be to God. So thank you for sharing today and, and we just pray that you'll be blessed and um, Terry Hart is going to be bringing the message next week our, our brother and uh, we're now going to, to either listen or sing or even dance um, as, as we, we worship together in, as we close this meeting but we do hope that you'll join us again next week and every blessing. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close Nothing can compare your our living hope Your presence I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this 
Presence, Lord. 